So that was the beginning of the year for Kyle Shanahan. Then he goes straight into the off season and within a few days of blowing the Super Bowl, blowing a lead in the second half and really botching overtime, he fires Steve Wilkes. Oh. Okay. I, I have a lot to say about that. I believe Steve Wilkes was a really good defensive coordinator. I never met him, but I did see him on TV. He was a man, is a man who's thoughtful. He's an intellectual. He has, he's a gentleman. He has great presence. In the middle of the season, he was up in the booth and Kyle demanded that he come down on the field. That's literally a come down. It's a come down. Yeah. He humiliated mm -hmm. the defensive coordinator and he set the stage for scapegoating him. In mm -hmm. regulation time in the Super Bowl, Iggy, am I wrong? They scored the offense scored 19 points. That's correct. Okay. That's not that great. And so mm -hmm. then, okay, Mahomes comes back and they beat the 49ers after Kyle made this terrible mistake. Like the only reason he, they got to the overtime is because the defense held Mahomes and Chiefs to 19 points. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, right. And then um, after the game, subsequently, he blamed Wilkes and some of the players did too. My impression is in not so veiled language, Bosa did as well. They, and they threw this guy cliche under the bus. Um, really, I don't think that was fair. And I think the way events have come after that, it shows it was very bad judgment. And I would imagine that he's made an enemy of Steve Wilkes. Uh, I, I imagine that he has. I thought the guy did a very good job. And afterward, a lot of the media took Kyle's part and said that Wilkes didn't do this or that. Iggy, I think he had the third-ranked defense in the league. He had the third-ranked defense in the league. He gave up 17.5 points per game. Now the 49ers have the 20th-ranked defense and give up 23.6 points per game. Yeah. So um, I think... First of all, he was wrong in getting rid of Wilkes, especially for what he replaced him with. And um, he scapegoated the guy. He, it's, it's, it's a continuing pattern. He can't look at himself and say, my yeah. offense wasn't that great. Um, my game management wasn't on, that great. My game management wasn't that great. I'm going to take it out on this guy. I'm going to take yeah. it out on this guy. Um, I don't like that. And I feel it shows a lack of self-awareness and narrow mindedness. So he scapegoats the wrong guy. He should have pointed the finger at himself. He points it at Steve Wilkes. He's out. Okay, fine. Go get a better defensive coordinator. He promotes Nick Sorensen and gets rid of Anthony Lynn, an offensive assistant head coach, and replaces him with Brandon Staley, a defensive uh, assistant head coach. And as we just pointed out, the defense is not good. I mean, I, I'd be surprised. They, they may have to fire Nick Sorensen after this year. Well, I think they probably should. Iggy, what did um, Fred Warner say after the, that debacle in Green Bay about Sorensen? So the Niners missed 19, 20 tackles. It was just disgusting. And someone asked Fred Warner after the game, like, what was what happened? How come you guys couldn't stop the run at all? And he goes, you know, Green Bay really presented some run looks in the first half that we weren't prepared for. And we got we got we, we adjusted to him eventually, but we got to be ready for that stuff, which is not even that veiled language it's saying our defensive coordinator didn't prepare us for the plays right. that the Packers were going to run. OK, now maybe he didn't prepare them. I mean. Certainly, there were a lot of weeks of Packers, 10 weeks of Packers games on film. They probably showed everything they have. Um, Sorensen should have seen it. But even then, Warner, who I, I think is a stand-up guy, is blaming the coach. And it yeah. shows, again, I feel that this team is in disarray, has been in disarray since the first game, and is pointing fingers. And here he's pointing fingers in the middle of the season at the defensive coordinator. Gee. And you knew it was a bad promotion because they <laughs> had to bring in Brandon Staley to help him. It's like, is Brandon Staley even good? He got ran out of L.A. So you have this combination trying to work together. They have different defensive philosophies. And to create room for Brandon Staley, they get rid of Anthony Lynn, who's now the run game coordinator with Washington, who's doing decently. 
I mean, meanwhile, the Niners offense, they move the ball pretty well, but they can't score in the red zone. They're one of the worst red zone offenses. It seems like Kyle Shanahan benefited in some ways from having, I mean, I, Anthony Lynn wasn't an offensive coordinator, but he had been an offensive coordinator. He kind of functioned as that guy uh, during the week. Could help Kyle Shanahan game plan. Now he's gone, and I think the offense has suffered. The way he reconfigured the coaching staff in the offseason hurt the whole team, and the one guy he kept was the special teams court coordinator, Brian Schneider, who's going to get fired, most likely. Oh, I've I, I never met the guy, but, you know, he's gone. And he deserves to be gone, Iggy. Those special teams are really, really bad. Really bad. Really bad really bad and they cost him games so again uh, i do believe that kyle has hired very many good assistant coaches but in this season he's not handled his coaching staff all that well no and there was reason to get rid of brian schneider i mean moody missed an extra point in the field goal and they had a muffed punt because darrell luter jr got pushed got blocked into the kicker uh, which the, the punt returner, which again happened a few weeks ago. So that was there. Then free agency starts and the Niners turn into the biggest circus in the NFL. Brandon, I, you yeah, hijacks the whole narrative of the team overshadows everything. And Kyle Shanahan lets him <laughs> for like five months. Yeah. Kyle let him take over the team. And again, it was very obnoxious the way, uh, um, Brandon, I, you handled himself like a real, adolescent and the the and i have to put lynch in on this and ownership they caved to that kid they caved they gave him too yeah. much money um and you know iggy when he wore the wrong shorts out to practice it was a black shorts day and he was in red or something like that mm -hmm. that was a screw you to the coach it was yeah he had got his, his contract and now he was saying i'm untouchable um it was a screw you to the coach in front of everybody front of the media in front of the team um it was a sign of kyle losing the team yes. losing one of his players yeah absolutely i mean he had this big stare down game of chicken with brandon Ayuk and made it seem like oh we're not gonna we don't have to pay you we're gonna draft ricky pearsall we have options we have leverage that all offseason <coughs> niners have all the leverage they don't have to give brandon what he wants and then they dragged it out, made it more of a spectacle than it needed to be. And at the very last minute, they gave him every single penny that he wanted. So it, it was and a they, fruitless and, distraction. And they shouldn't have. They should have drawn the line and they should have been a tough. Uh, they, they, on that side, I would have been with a management. They should have been tough and said, this is all rough. Take it or leave it. That's what they should have done. They, they should have traded him to Pittsburgh. You want to go to Pittsburgh? Here you go. Have a great time. Yeah, go to Pittsburgh. Yeah, go to, go Pittsburgh. to Pittsburgh. And they should have traded we, we De Debo Samuel here. too, but they didn't. Yeah, they should have traded Debo Samuel too, but they didn't. And then these two guys sort of changed the uh, culture of the team. Yeah, well, we'll get all to of a Debo sudden they're above later. everyone else. So the Brandon Ayuk drama was big, and then also in free agency, or this is during OTAs and minicamp, <sighs> they extend Christian McCaffrey's contract and give him guaranteed money this year and next year while he's dealing with bilateral Achilles tendonitis. Yeah, uh, again, this is not only the coach, this is the whole organization, but uh, look, God love Christian McCaffrey. He's has been a great player, and he really, his heart is in the right place. But I don't think you reward a guy when you you have questions about his health. Uh, certainly, you want to um, do due diligence and see what happens. I mean, I I'm sure fans were happy that he's around and he got his money. But that's not how you do business. I, I really, um, it, it, do, do, do good teams do business like that? You reward this guy and give him this guaranteed money and, and he has to run off to Germany to, to, to be able to play? And I think what makes it even worse, you gave him this extension. Um, he's a running back who's older. He had this injury that you either knew about or should have known about. But right after you give him the extension, you, you show up at his uh, wedding. And you're taking pictures like you're in his family when you kind of are in his family. I mean, your dad coached his dad. The Shanahan's and the, and, the, and the McCaffrey's go back for generations. So it almost looked like the good old boys taking care of each other, which it may have not been that. But the fact that it could be perceived that way isn't good for the 49ers. You know, um, that's very interesting. 
I think there should be a distance between a football head coach and the players. Eddie was very close with players, but Bill Walsh was not. He, um, I saw him. He was cordial, but he knew that he was going to get rid of these guys at some point, and he kept a polite distance. He would become close after they retired. He was very, very loyal to all of his 49er players after he retired, but he was rather uh, standoffish. And I have to say, I think that's how you do it. And I think Kyle is not a good, one of his sins is not a good leader. He doesn't know the right distance. Absolutely. He's way too close. He has friends on the team, and that means that he has people who aren't quite his friends on the team. He plays so favorites. we're still in free agency. He does yeah. play favorites, which is, again, it's supposed to be a meritocracy. It's not something that good coaches do. Okay, yeah. okay sticking in free agency. agency. This didn't seem like a big deal at the time, but I think it's affecting the Niners now. <clears throat> Settling for Brandon Allen and Joshua Dobbs as the two backup quarterbacks. Yes. You know, they used to talk. Uh, I love Lynch. Um, he always was saying, we have a great quarterback room. We have a great quarterback room, whatever that means. Well, they ain't got a great, great quarterback room right now. Um, you you go from Purdy, who's a very good quarterback, hurt, unfortunately, to Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen is a career zilch. He's a career nothing. Um, yeah. There should have been. And Joshua Dobbs, who I think probably is better, um, but even he, there should have been, you know, it's funny. You come back to Trey Lance. If they hadn't just thrown him away, they could have developed a whole different offense with him and they could have emphasized running. Th there would have been another look. There would have been something else they could have given as opposed to uh, Brandon Allen, who was sort of a carbon copy uh, of Brock Purdy, but not a very good carbon copy. Yeah, Brock Purdy who can't move. Yeah, he's a Brock Purdy who can't move and who had, and has a had, broken finger. Who, that was the other thing. He played him. Now, the finger was on the other hand, but still you got to grip the ball. And he did fumble twice. And and um, when you asked Shanahan about it, he gave you a look like, what are you asking me that for? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't wearing play. a splint on his hand. Yeah, I would probably play the other guy. Yeah. He's I, really, you know. Like, yeah. Let me just say, uh, in the thing I wrote in Substack today, I emphasize one of his sins, which is stubbornness. Now, it's not one of the traditional sins, but he's really stubborn, Iggy. And yeah. um, if if he, and narrow-minded, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Brandon Allen. I, and if anyone says he should go with the other guy, that makes him more want to go with Brandon Allen. I used to be in coaching meetings with Bill Walsh. Other coaches would come up with ideas and he would think about them right at the table. And he didn't always agree. You had to make a good case, but he was open-minded, and I saw him change his mind. This guy, it's like he's impervious to reality. Yeah, why did, why did he insist on making Brandon Allen his number two quarterback? Because everyone told him not to. Why did he overuse Christian McCaffrey when he came back from bilateral Achilles tendonitis? Because everyone told him not to. I think you can explain most of Kyle Shanahan's strange decisions by him sort of responding to his critics and making it clear that no one's going to tell him how to run his team, which is kind of actually telling him how to run his team, just using reverse psychology. Yeah. With that, like you do with a two-year-old. Yeah. Like you do with a two-year-old. Okay. So that's the off season. I mean, just real quick before we move on from the backup quarterback point in 2022, they go through four quarterbacks. They got Josh Johnson on the field at the very end of the season. And he's hurt too. And they said, boy, you know, backup quarterback, it's a really important position. You can't have enough talent in that position. We're going to bring in Sam Darnold. And last year, they have one year where the quarterback doesn't get hurt. And they're like, screw it. This position doesn't matter anymore. No, if they actually had a, a, a backup quarterback who is decent, they, could, they, have a good, they have enough talent on their roster to win without Brock Purdy. The Packers had the foresight to bring in Malik Willis, and they won two games with him this year. So that's a big one to me. And then finally... Right before the season starts, there was the Ricky Pearsall incident. Oh, God. May I talk about that one, Iggy? Mm -hmm. The poor guy gets shot in Union Square. 
And this is a big deal. I mean, when a person gets shot, it's a big deal. A bullet, mm -hmm. the, a bullet went through this poor kid. It became national news. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I, I don't, I've never met Kyle Shanahan, but I've been around a lot of coaches in my life, Iggy. Kyle must live somewhere in the South Bay. I don't know. Hey, Kyle, you're, you're a number one draft pick, just got shot. You know, I'm not going to go to the hospital. We're having a party tonight. You know, I have a party. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I can't just concentrate on one player. He said something like that. I got a whole team to worry about. We have to do team bonding. It was team bonding. Well, how did that work out, the team bonding? Um, I have to do team bonding. So he's there at his house drinking, listening to music. And this kid's in San Francisco. Hanging out with that General rapper, Rick Hospital. Ross? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, it, the optics, nothing wrong with a rapper, but it looks like you're, you're just he's not on the team. Having, a having a great time. And this poor kid is in the hospital and what would it have meant to Ricky Pearsall for the head coach? Now Lynch went, which was Lynch is a good guy. was very nice, but the head coach should have gone. And a lot of fans I've talked about this are really angry at me. No, he didn't have to go. Lynch went blah, blah, blah. He had a whole team, a, a certain percentage of fans always sides with management and or the coach. I'm telling you it was wrong. It was the wrong thing to do. Any coach with backbone and character would have got his tush in the car and driven up to the hospital and had someone else monitor and do the party. His wife, um, uh, Fred Warner could have been in charge. Uh, whatever, you go to the hospital. And I feel so strong about this. Um, my dad used to always try to tell me, What's the right thing to do, Lowell, and what's the wrong thing? And I grew up hearing that the right thing to do is to be there with your player who got shot. And it would have helped the team. It would have shown the team where um, Kyle Shanahan's morality is and where his priorities are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Ricky Pearsall said on the record that when he saw John Lynch walk in the hospital room, he broke into tears. Because it meant that crying. much to him. Meant that yeah. much to him. So I'm thinking it would have meant something to him if Kyle had walked in too. So let's linger on this for a minute. And Iggy, I'd rather talk about this than you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, about Kyle's point of view. Why didn't he go? Was it that it was a pain in the ass? He didn't want to drive? Um, was it that he felt he owed the team a party? Or was it that he simply has no empathy, doesn't understand? He understands football plays, but you also have to understand people. Now, with Javarius Ward, he's been wonderful. So I want to give him credit for that. This poor man is what he's going through. He's been wonderful. Why wasn't he wonderful with Ricky Pearsall? It's it's not quite as bad as what happened to Javarius Ward, but it was a tragedy. It was very bad. And I just think have a heart show people you have a heart and it makes me iggy it makes me feel uncomfortable about kyle it it's not only what he did with pearsall was a football sin iggy it was a sin yeah